I have put myself into some quite unpleasant and tricky situations in life while trying to multitask. We can all agree that we're all born with a certain amount of time that's quite limited. We all say time is money, time is precious, and every hour, minute, and second counts. Because that's all we're born with, is time. We're really not born with anything else but time. And every individual will have a different amount of time that they will have on this planet. And sometimes to save time, we multitask. Now, in this video, I will try to go through three different types of multitasking. I will try to convince you not to multitask, because most of the time it is not a good idea. I'll give you daily examples of multitasking not working, and I don't even think I have to do that, because you can probably relate and think back to times where multitasking actually led you to be stressed out or worse off than you started off. So let's begin touching on this subject of cognitive multitasking. What is cognition? Cognition is any time we use the brain to acquire knowledge. So cognitive multitasking is when we use two different tasks or we try to perform two different tasks that require our mental capacity. And every single time that we use our mental capacity in a new way, when we're learning a skill or learning some knowledge, it takes quite a lot of brain power to do these things. And more often than not, we always make the mistake of sometimes trying to do two, two things that we haven't done in the past at the same time. Now, this can be anything from watching a YouTube video that you haven't seen before, a movie, playing a video game where the scenario is different than you're used to, playing an instrument and <laughs> listening to a podcast at the same time. Many different things can be put into example for cognitive multitasking. It can be a solving a maths problem while reading a book. All of that does not work because when we're performing a task for the first time or close to the first time in our lives, we require so much brain power that we're not able to do two tasks at the same time. So cognitive multitasking does not work. Motor multitasking. Motor multitasking works because this is a physical activity that you're doing like walking. When you're walking, you can also talk on the phone. When you can just basically walk down the street and talk to your friend that's beside you and maintain a good conversation. Because walking is an autonomous skill. It's something that's been engraved in our lives so much that we do not need to think about walking just the same way we do not need to think about breathing. It does not require any of our cognitive function. So we're just able to do this quite simply. So this sort of multitasking actually works, but it's quite rare for us as human beings to always just do this one type of multitasking. More often than not, we try to do the cognitive multitasking that I described in the previous point. That does not work. But every single action that's automated by our brains, and we try to multitask something else alongside with it, most of the times it does work. Now let me give you some examples of motor multitasking. So let's say you have been playing guitar for the past 10 years and you weren't much of a singer, you never really sang, but playing guitar is basically like walking to you right now. You don't need to think about it. You basically pick it up and play anything you want to play, but you haven't sang before. So singing in your case will be quite simple. All you have to do is add one more thing or skill that you want to learn to an autonomous habit that you've already built. And it's quite simple. All you have to do is just sing and you don't really need to think about playing guitar. The same way as you're talking with your friend while walking down the street. You're not thinking about walking or breathing at the same time. You're doing many things at the same time that are autonomous. So. This is going to be purely individual. For motor multitasking, it's going to be very individual because there are certain things that we do in our lives that we're all individually good at. I could be good at playing this guitar, 
but you could be good at playing a certain video game that is always the same. So you're able to add another skill onto that. So you're able to watch a YouTube video and take it all in. But many times, video games do not provide us with the same scenario over and over. Sometimes they do, but sometimes, or most times, they give us a different scenario constantly to keep us engaged, give us that dopamine. Otherwise, video games will become very boring. So, I hope you understand motor multitasking. Another example I can give you is basically a juggler. When you see a juggler doing like, you know, juggling the three balls or even more, like four balls, and he's like talking to the crowd, like a, a crowd performer. And then he's like, I don't know, cycling on a unicycle and I don't know, spinning his hat or whatever. He's been juggling for the past, I don't know how many years, and he's been doing these things consecutively. So this routine has become a motor habit. This, this is a, an autonomous thing in his life now. So he's able to talk to the crowd about different things because it's become autonomous. So every single autonomous habit is going to be individual for us. So if you have built an autonomous habit, you can add a multitask or add another task to your habit and then it will work to some extent. It's not going to be as profound as focusing on one thing at a time. Even if you are an expert at playing guitar, and you're trying to sing at the same time, you are not going to become better at playing guitar. You are going to become better at singing and playing guitar consecutively and at the same time, but you're not going to become better at playing guitar because now all of your focus is going towards singing. It's not going towards playing the guitar. You're not learning anything new on the guitar. The same with any other autonomous activity that you're doing and that you've built up in your life. You're not going to improve it. You're only going to improve the habit that you're trying to do that is new. And let me add to that, because, because your brain activity is still taken up by this autonomous habit that you are doing, you are still going to underperform on the new activity that you're trying to learn. So let's say this activity is singing and you're trying to learn how to sing while playing guitar. Well, let me straight away say that this is not going to be as effective as just singing on its own. If you stand upright and just sing without doing anything else in the background, you're going to be way more effective at learning how to sing and soak it all in into your brain so it's memorable. You'll, you'll be able to adapt to singing way quicker than actually playing guitar, even though you've done it for the rest, for, for most of your life. It doesn't matter if you've done it for 20 or 30 years. You're still learning a new skill and it requires all of your attention. This is why so many people meditate. This is why so many people sit down and meditate and only focus on their breath. Because focusing on one thing at a time is the most calming thing in the world. When you focus on nothing else but one thing, a breath, jogging, if you're running and you're only focusing on each step that you take, it can become meditative. If you're in the sauna and all you're focusing on is the heat and the, the temperature, then it's also a like a meditation. Everything that you do that is only focusing on one thing can be viewed as meditation. And men many people say, oh, fishing is so therapeutic. Well, this is because you're only fishing. You're not doing any other tasks. If you're going to only perform one task and focus on that one task, then you're going to think of it as therapeutic. This is, I can give you many examples of that. But this is only when you focus on one thing at a time. So when you try to motor multitask and add another thing to that, let's say you're fishing and you're listening to a podcast, all of a sudden it's not as therapeutic. Your fishing has become less effective and the podcast, well, sometimes you will just get distracted. Now, parallel processing is another form of multitasking and this is the most effective way of multitasking for human beings. It happens all the time when we simply just walk. I cannot give you many examples of parallel multitasking but one example I can give you is simply just walking. Simply walking to a destination, let's say you're going to work or to the gym or to class, wherever you're walking, 
you are parallel processing because things are happening around you. There are different things. There are people walking by, trees, you know, shaking from the wind. There are dogs walking by barking. There's noise. There's vision. There's smells. There's like maybe a, a bakery next to you and you can smell all of the breads being baked. And this is called parallel processing. As you're doing an autonomous habit, an autonomous activity, other things also come into you and like smell, hearing and vision. And it's all processed by our, by our minds quite simply. It does not take much processing from our brains. It's not cognitive like a reading or solving a maths equation. So this sort of multitasking also works and it works the best from all of these three different types of multitasking that I'm after telling you about. So to recap, cognitive multitasking does not work. Every single time that you're doing a new thing, it doesn't matter if it's a new YouTube video that you haven't seen and you're trying to play a video game alongside it or trying to do any other thing, building a business, talking to a friend, it doesn't matter, it's not going to work because you're not going to remember one or the other. You're going to underperform in both of them. And the only reason why you're doing this is to increase the dopamine in, in your daily life. You're only trying to cognitively multitask because the one thing that you're doing is too boring for you. So you try and add another thing to make it more stimulating for your mind. But in return, you get way more stress than you're supposed to be getting and your cognitive function decreases and yeah, your performance is reduced by at least half. So, to get more tasks done, sometimes we multitask in the kitchen. When we're trying to meal prep, we're trying to like, you know, cook some food for ourselves, maybe we're putting in some food for a dog, we're cleaning the counters. This sort of multitasking also doesn't really work. Because when we're multitasking in the kitchen or any other place that you can imagine, if you, if you were to focus on that one task, if you're only to focus on cooking your own food and finish that and then move on to the other thing, then cook your dog's food and then once you're done that, then move on to the other thing, it's going to be way more effective and more pleasurable to you. Otherwise, it's going to add unnecessary stress to you. Now, this is another thing. If you're doing something and you're waiting for that thing to get done or waiting for it to finish like let's say you're cooking eggs and eggs take like three minutes to cook and you then you're going to pour like a, a bowl of dog food in the in the middle of it it's going to be okay but more than likely sometimes people get sidetracked and while you're pouring in your dog's food you know your eggs are frying away and then you go and check up on something else and you're like, oh well i've done my dog's food now i can you know feed my dog i'm going to do something else as well and we get carried away and just try and save time too much. And this can become a problem. Again, going back to one task at a time being the most effective, that's again why we, why we meditate. So I can give you now examples of multitasking that has pretty much screwed me over so many times. And thank God it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't bad for me or the other person. And basically what I'm talking about is watching YouTube videos while driving or talking on the phone while driving, texting and driving is probably the worst kind of multitasking that you can do. Because yes, driving is an autonomous activity. It's something that you've done many times, even if I, I could have 20 years of driving experience. But my circumstances are always changing. Every single time I'm put in a different scenario while driving. There are different people driving around me. There's different activities going on. There's like people maybe not paying attention. You should be paying attention. And there's always a different scenario that you're placed in while driving, even though it's an autonomous activity. So if you try and add texting to that or watching a YouTube video, then you're putting yourself into a very dangerous place. And there has been so many times that I have nearly crashed while doing this. And this has is thankfully stayed in the past. And it's something that I'm not going to repeat. And this sort of stupidity should not be repeated by anyone. So if you haven't tried it already, please do not try it. And if you have, then it would be a good time to stop. So 
what did we learn today from this not so short video? It was supposed to be five minutes. Well, cognitive multitasking whenever you're learning new skills simultaneously does not work. If you put two together, it pretty much, it, one plus one equals zero is the best way I can explain it. One new skill, another new skill equals zero. If you learn one skill at a time, you can give it your full attention and then you can get some flow, you can get into, into the rhythm of doing it and then you can do deep work. Then you can actually focus on that one particular task or that new skill that you're trying to learn. If you do anything that's the opposite of that, then you're going to be putting yourself in a stressful situation and your performance is going to be severely reduced. There are motor multitasking and parallel processing that you could be doing that's part of natural life. These are things that we will keep on doing and it's fine. The most important thing to consider is not to do anything that is cognitive multitasking. And again, examples of it could be just simply watching a YouTube video while playing a video game or talking on the phone while trying to read a book. Like, I mean, you've seen the thumbnail. You cannot talk on the phone and read a book and learn anything new from the book or pay attention to the conversation. There was actually a funny story. I remember playing chess on my phone and I was talking to my girl at the same time. And my girl was explaining something to me and it was a conversation that I can't remember because I was playing chess at the same time. And as you know, chess always puts you into a new circumstance every single time. It's never, well, there is similar situations that can happen, but you have to give a lot of your cognition to the game. And when you're trying to engage in a conversation simultaneously, then it's not gonna work. So what happened in my case was I was trying to play chess and I was trying to talk to my girl at the same time. And eventually it developed into a fight between me and my girl because Obviously, I couldn't remember what she said, and this is something that you should not be doing. If you're talking to someone, then pay full attention to them and try not to do, try, try not to save time because in the long run, you're going to spend five hours fighting about it. So that's all for this video. Make sure you don't cognitively try and multitask, and that's it for me. If you're interested in learning anything else from me, then consider booking a coaching call down in the description below. This is where we can talk one-to-one -one and we can discuss a variety amount of problems that you may be having or in general if you just want to talk one-to-one -one, then consider booking the coaching call if you like the video do like it and if you want to subscribe to the channel to see more content from me then consider subscribing because again it all helps the algorithm if you comment down below what you think of this video again it helps the algorithm and my channel will grow so thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a good day. Peace.